From the ISIS terror threat to the recent counterattack on Sony, there has been no shortage of foreign crises in the world this year, of course, in 2014. But what are the most serious f threats facing America come 2015? Joining us now, national security analyst from the Clarion Project, Ryan Murrow. Thanks for joining us. Start with this one in the sense that for so long, America's policy was we do not with terrorists. It was very simple. All of a sudden, you have the Bo Bergdahl exchange where they offered up a number of Taliban terrorists to get Bo Bergdahl back. Then all of a sudden, Sony caves on the hacking to North Korea. Is all of a sudden this going to embolden our enemies? Oh, definitely. And so I rated that as uh, the number five threat because basically we have taught our adversaries that, yes, we do negotiate with terrorists. And not only do we negotiate with terrorists, we'll cave under pressure. And that goes for the U.S. government and for the private sector and expect our adversaries to learn from those lessons next year. One of those big adversaries being Iran, who we're negotiating with. A lot of folks say that the administration just is not holding a tough enough line. If things keep going as they currently are, you're going to see an Iranian threat bigger than ever next year. And that's because the nuclear program is expanding. They're probably outsourcing some of the work to North Korea. And as Western businesses become involved in Iran and saving their economy and the regime, you're going to have an even stronger regime than you did before. And, and this isn't something we've talked about much in terms of the bad side of this. Right now, oil is at an all-time low, or low for a very long time since 2009, 50-plus dollars a barrel. But that could change very quickly with countries like Russia, Venezuela, and, of course, Iran. Right. These countries need the price of oil to be very high in order to sustain their current budgets. Otherwise, they have to cut the budgets and then become destabilized. So these countries need to raise the price of oil. They do that through conflict and perhaps even through a terrorist attack on Middle Eastern oil infrastructure. Gotcha. OK. And speaking of this, in terms of the Middle East, the terror safe havens around the Middle East, a lot of folks are saying they're growing. You've got Somalia. You've got a failed state in Libya now. You've got some other places in Africa. You've got ISIS in Syria that's having these bases of operation they can build and U.S. troops are leaving Afghanistan. Right. The next generation of terrorists will continue to be born in Syria, where the civil war is going to continue. And also Libya, another civil war that you don't hear too often about. And then the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan is going to open up another opportunity for terrorists to establish a safe haven. And as we're seeing now with the rise of the lone wolf attacks, there's a lot of folks in the United States who are now getting inspired by magazines. They're reading on the Internet. They're being self-radicalized. And as we've seen in Australia, we've seen in Canada, we're not immune to these kinds of homegrown threats. Right. The math just shows that the threat from terrorists, homegrown terrorists, and also abroad is increasing. We know the number of al-Qaeda-type jihadists has doubled since 2010. So the number one threat is uh, homegrown terrorism. And we'll see what happens. Or as one of my dear friends used to say, don't bother worrying because you never worry about the right thing. So right. We'll, see, <laughs> we'll see what 2015 brings to the world. Thank you, Ryan Murrow from the Clarion Project. Appreciate you being here, sir. Coming up next, get this.